The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. Well, this is the Alpha Sessions. I'm Emma and I'm here with Erin Bowman. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for coming down. Oh, thanks for having me. And being one of our first few uh, in-person sessions. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We first met you at Equiston Yards Mm -hmm. um, as part of the uh, Talent Bank thing. Yes. When restrictions probably were only just starting to like come good, I think, a little bit. I think so, yeah. Um, And I think I asked you what it was like for you to be doing music in London and you were like I actually don't know <laughs> right because <laughs> yeah. I have been, uh, been stuck inside yeah. for a little bit <laughs> first question is I'm hoping that's changed now yes yes okay. I've been I've been gigging quite a bit and exploring London a lot more so that's been nice yeah cool yeah my move early 2020 uh tough timing but it's finally it feels a lot more normal now so yeah I'm getting out there What's that? What's the move from the other side of the world been like? Um, well, interesting that it was right before COVID. Yeah. Um, that's been a little bit tough. But I was visiting London like loads before. I would I would come over from LA and stay for like a month at a time. So I knew, you know, I know how amazing London can be. So I was super excited to move here. Um, you know, COVID had other plans for us all, but still happy to be here. Just the timeline shifted a bit. What was it about London that you were like, right? I'm going down there. Um, you know, I was, when I was living in LA, my closest friend there, um, she was dating somebody in London and she had been visiting London like every so often. And I was wanting to travel and I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to tag along if that's okay. So, um, I visited with her and then just immediately loved it. It just like the second that not even London, just landing in England, I really did feel like it was home. It really? did, yeah, like immediately. Cool. Whereas like LA never felt like that for me. I only yeah. had moved to LA for music, yeah. and you know, different strokes for different folks. Everybody loves something, you know, in a city. Um, but for me, London was like the place. I knew it like right when I got here. Oh, that's so yeah. nice to hear. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great place. I was like, oh, no, I moved west, and I should have moved east because I'm from <laughs> New Jersey. So, like, I went the other way. I was like, no. But I'm here now. Yeah. How would you um, compare the music industry side of things? Um, I think that L.A. is – well, for me specifically, like, I moved to London because I wanted to gig. And I think that the opportunities for artists here to gig is, like – so much more than it is in Los Angeles. Really? I think, yeah, like... That's much. So many places here want live music. So many places. And whether it's, like, covers or originals, you know, whatever, but it's it's a mix, and it's so nice. Like, you guys welcome new artists, new music, all different kinds of music, where Ellie didn't feel like that for me. Everyone okay. has, like, a different experience. People move out there and just absolutely love it, but for me to, like, want to be performing live, it did not feel like the right city. If you want to write, like, writing music, doing writing sessions, that kind of thing, oh, my gosh. Like, so many people out there working on music. So it is great in its own way. Okay. But for me, just, like, gigging was where it was at. See, I think that's so interesting because I know so many English people that are musicians that basically say the flip reverse to what you say. Oh, no. And then go, (laughs) and he's amazing because there's a great gigging scene. Really? Yeah. So I think, like, it's that whole grass is greener to Uh, a certain extent. Totally, yeah. I think the grass is always greener. (laughs) Yeah, people are so excited here. Like, I just, yeah, they're, like, desperate to get to L.A. where I was just, like, desperate to get over to London. So that's just normal, I guess. Yeah, I guess there's kind of a hype around where you aren't so you kind of have right. that right. magnetic draw I guess yeah. to a certain extent and now in hindsight I'm kind of like oh you know what I'd like to go back to LA and visit like yeah. I would probably enjoy it so much more as a just going there for like two weeks and I'd probably like pack in all like gigs and sessions yeah, and it yeah. would probably be like a different I probably didn't enjoy it as much as I should have you know but I think also when you live somewhere the novelty kind of wears off Definitely. If you've been there your whole yeah. life. Like, yeah. I definitely don't appreciate some of the stuff that London has to offer oh, because okay. I've been here all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's old news for you. You're yeah, like, yeah, exactly. whatever. It's yeah. just home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's anything. Yeah. Um, so how it works for people that haven't heard the session before is we get an artist to come in and they play some live tracks. Um, in your case, some amazing live tracks. Oh, thank you. Um, and I wanted to ask you about your brand new single, Sweet Like Summer, mm-hmm. Sweet um, like Summer. which you also have played for us. Uh, talk to us yes. about that because it was recently released. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're, you know, nearing the end of summer, but I think we have a few, we- well, 
the UK didn't really get summer weather, <laughs> but technically it's summer. Um, yeah, the song took a little while to, like, finally finish up. Um, but I haven't released something in, like, two years. So I was like, you know what? I love the song so much. Let's just get it out. I didn't want to wait till next summer. That would be, like, an eternity. To be honest, if you're waiting for British summer, you'd be waiting ages anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I know my family back in New Jersey is, like, texting me all the time with all these pictures. And it uh, just looks so nice and warm. But to be fair... Nobody, you know, nobody moves to the UK for the weather, right? At least you so, don't need aircon, so. Yeah, exactly. So that that's nice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we like summer. Uh, I, I wrote with a friend of mine, James, and he produced it. And yeah, we just, oh, we worked so hard on the song, honestly. It was one of those where, like, we were sending notes back and forth. We were doing Skype sessions, in-person sessions, like, but I'm so happy with the way it came out. He did, like, yeah. such a good job on it. And it's so nice to release something because, like I said, two years, that's such a long time yeah. COVID obviously like I didn't feel um I know plenty of people release music during COVID but I just didn't feel like I, I wanted to because it was so many so many people were putting stuff out and I wanted to like gig alongside of releasing music so I, I was I was waiting for the right opportunity and this felt like it I think the song just yeah made sense so was the inspiration for the song the fact that you were waiting for English summer um it wasn't quite, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't quite that um how did the song come together I don't know writing can be such a weird thing you just like you know James would sit down at the piano and then just words start flowing and then it sort of like comes together um but it's a nice like my previous release which was the end of 2019 was an EP um and it's like quite emotional um a little like somber you know which is still good people love that but sweet like summer has a nice um it still has like the raw like emotional like in the verses um and the bridge but then like the chorus is so hopeful and it's nice to release something like that because a lot of my stuff is not like that (laughs) so this is a little bit of happiness but people i think at this time appreciate the hopefulness yes i think so i think think we all need a little bit right yeah absolutely (laughs) absolutely
the taste of summer You're so bored to shit Find another lover Ooh Sweet like summer Ooh A bright eyed boy With a lovely mother From the northeast One of four brothers Ooh Sweet like The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. <laughs> um, random question now. What is yes. on your current playlist? Oh my gosh. Wow. Good question. Oh, okay. Good I question. actually have, yeah. I'm I'm such a lover of like older music. Okay. Um, so like I was listening to the Eagles earlier Sweet. today. Yeah. Like Cheryl Crow. I like nice. that stuff. Um, there is a song, uh, there's an English artist. What's her name? Holly Humberstone. Yeah, yeah, I think. she's great. Okay, yeah, th- her song "The Walls Are Way Too Thin" yeah. or whatever that's called. <laughs> I love that song so much. And I, to be honest, like, yeah, I'm I'm not listening to like loads of new music, but she, yeah, I think that song is so so good. Yeah. I just I listen to it like on repeat over and over again. I think my boyfriend was like, okay, I think that's enough. Okay, like we heard that. it enough <laughs> times at this point. Okay. <laughs> Would you say that the Eagles um, were some of your great influences yeah I think so I think my parents have like I grew up listening to all different kinds of music cool. both my, my mom really loves like the Motown stuff my dad like you know Eagles Beatles uh Crosby Stills and Nash like that kind of thing like I feel like because of them I just heard so much music growing up yeah. um and yeah the Eagles are fantastic like their lyrics are so great I actually saw the Eagles um wow this is a couple years you? back in London That's in so cool. at Wembley and wow. Cheryl Crow opened for them it was like what? my greatest yeah my dream concert it was so That's good insane. yeah That's so cool yeah it was such a good concert and um at Wembley yeah at what? Wembley and Glenn Fry's son because you know unfortunately he passed away but yeah. his son was on the tour so he was doing his part oh that's mega cool and he was so good because you know that's a hard that's hard yeah, to live absolutely. up to like Glenn Fry but he was fantastic yeah I just think the Eagles have such great melodies and lyrics so yeah i think all that music that i listened to growing up influenced me in you know different ways because also like my mom would love like loved whitney houston so that was like a big one Uh, my very eclectic yeah (laughs) group of songs i listened to as a child yeah so um like kind of look at your instagram and you kind of see that you've done some awesome covers um yes. and uh one that really struck, struck me was the uh six pence none the richest oh, track kiss me yes and also uh fleetwood mac oh yeah mm-hmm. um yep. by the way great favorite fleetwood mac song i agree oh yeah. um, <laughs> i was just wondering like what do you make a good cover like what makes you pick that track Ooh. wow what is it um well sometimes it's if i know i can play it on guitar that Uh is always a good start um if there's like a really tricky chord in there i'm like ooh, okay (laughs) let's put that on the shelf for now let's go to an easier one um i don't know again i think it's just like yeah certain songs will pop into my head and i'm like ooh, gotta learn a cover of that that's just such a good one because especially doing yeah like i'm such a music lover and and you can if you love a song so much, that shows when you're playing yeah. it. And I think that that is what people respond to, right? Yeah. Like, seeing somebody enjoy, enjoying, like, playing that song. So, Fleetwood Mac stuff, I love performing. Safe, I really safe. do. I love playing those songs. Dreams, Gypsy, like, those are just everywhere. Like, I, those are my songs, yeah. you know? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Is there a, a song that you just wouldn't touch just because you think, like, it's so perfect you couldn't even go there? Yeah. Oof, what is that? Hmm. I don't. I don't know if there is because I think if it is such like a phenomenal song yeah. or something that you feel like ooh maybe you do your own little twist on it so people can't like compare the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think there's anything that I would like real really like steer clear of. I don't think so. No, I would try it out and do a little right, different, cool. a new spin on it. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, so just before you moved to London, you released an EP called Apartment 101. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just wondering if that's what you used to call your LA apartment. 
So yeah, my apartment in LA was apartment 101. Ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. It was the first uh it was the first door on the right and it was like <laughs> it hit me it was like, "Oh, I have to I have to title the EP that." So That's, does that mean if you did another EP, you'd call it what number flat you live in now? <laughs> yeah. Number 9. Think, oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 <laughs> my um it's not going to have as nice a ring to it. I'm not going <laughs> to announce my address, but it's not believe me when I say it's not going to be as nice as apartment 101. Yeah. That just worked out so much, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. Cuz if it was like apartment you know 107 yeah. it wouldn't have been as good right no exactly 101 is like so like we live at number 41 I can't imagine going yep let's call the EP number 41 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's not gonna work as as well as apartment 101 did no I think I I think I have to move on from the titling you know like Adele does yeah, all yeah. the ages I don't think I can do all the or like Ed Sheeran yeah. does divide equals yes, times yes. that kind of vibe I did want to do um, so the album that I'm working on. All the songs are about like you know a specific person, a, a heart, a well, heartbreak. They're not about your flat. They're not about my flat. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but part of me did want to use his address for the next, <laughs> like for the for the album. Just, just in case you didn't realize it was about him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I still might do it. To be that's honest, so good. I wouldn't do like the full things. You know, that's a little bit creepy. But <laughs> maybe like you know, there's a letter and a number. I might do it. So if it is, not that many people will know, but you will know. And anybody listening, they'll be like, "What does that mean? What is that number in that letter?" Yeah. And you'll know. <laughs> be like a weird Morse code type vibe. Yes. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it though. I'm not I'm not <laughs> sure. He might be like, whoa, that's a little bit much, Aaron. <laughs> not that I care what he thinks. Does but, he you know. know that it's all about him? Oh, he's got to, yeah. yeah he okay. definitely knows. Yeah. We don't speak. <laughs> we're not in, <laughs> we're not in a good place with each other, but yeah. But he no. sends you emojis telling you that he yeah. knows it's all about him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, just that like flat line face emoji, you know? Flat eyes, flat mouth, really. Or the one with like the clenched teeth. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's feeling that like regularly. Yeah. So what was that like to put together? Was that like a release, an outlet for you? post kind of breakup yeah i think so i i think writing those songs in fact i actually had to say like okay aaron you need to be done now writing those songs because yeah. they were just like really i feel like i used to be someone who would have to like okay i'm i would have to say to myself like okay aaron you're gonna sit down you're gonna write a song today and then i would sit there and i would be so frustrated nothing would you know nothing yeah. was well, coming pressure, to me I guess, eh? it's terrible yeah so then i was like oh you know what i'm just i'm i'm, I'm gonna try a little bit less once I had the heartbreak and just, and for a year it was sort of like, it wasn't heartbreak. It was just this on and off, like messy type thing. You know, we, we've all had it, right? Um, and songs were flowing out of me like a river. And I, I really had to say like, okay, Aaron, you need to be done. Because you could you go message on about him that to be like, years. Thanks very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've sorted yeah. me out. <laughs> my, uh, my Grammy speech would be, uh, it would, I might say thanks. I might say other words. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, We'll see. Still, still deciding which uh, which path I want to Not choose. Repeatable there, radio words, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> we won't we won't say them today. Um, no, it, it's it's old news. But and the album I'm excited about. You know, cool. If that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have these songs, exactly. right? And like, it's an incredible EP. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Did yeah. it take you a while to put it together? Um, yeah. Sorry, I went on a long winded thing. That no, was your no, original no, question, but um, I think writing the songs yeah. is a is pretty quick but then it's like really once you know i'm just writing them on acoustic guitar so it's like pretty simple my chords are basic but then producing them and like the you know again um james was one of the guys that worked on apartment 101 he's who produced sweet like summer like he we are just like on the same page but it does take a while to like produce it and add all like the bits and the ear candy and all that stuff so it does take it yeah it takes some time apartment 101 took a while to finalize did you kind of go into the studio and have an idea of what you wanted it to sound like or was that kind of more coaxed with james yeah it was more james was a big help with that i think without even me having to like say because sometimes it's hard to for me to say like what some artists are really great about that they'll know like what the drums need to sound like yeah, what yeah. the bass part is like i i really need i like a good team effort so james is really great for that kind of thing um 
he it seems like he knows what I want without even me saying what I want. He might have a very different like yeah, idea of this. Yeah. He might be like, Aaron is a pain. She doesn't have a clue. <laughs> like, oh, but, didn't no, I tell you work. I'm interviewing him next week? I'm going to ask him the same question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His response might be a little different. <laughs> like, I hate working with her. It's pure misery. <laughs> <laughs> no, we really do have a good time, which is also really nice. That That's like, you know, music can be such a such a painful experience if it's not with the right people but with him it's like it it feels just like natural yeah natural and just so much fun it's nice um you also played us a track called 10 things i heard about you yes um which i have to admit before i heard it Mm -hmm. immediately went to that 90s chick flick yes with julia styles and yeah it is a nod to that movie (laughs) yeah (laughs) it is a reference for sure (laughs) um talk us through like that writing uh process because it sounds quite quite sincere quite blue Hmm. yeah that is one of um honestly that's one of my favorite songs to um to play live stunning um thanks it's so intense i'm probably scare people a little bit with it but um, But also beautiful thank you yeah Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites to perform also the um again i'm not like when i started learning guitar it was really just to like be able to write so I just wanted to learn the basics so when I can come up with even how simple I mean it is simple right it's not like a guitarist riff but like it just works so well with the song I just and on that song sort of came together really quickly with the way the um the finger picking went and then just like lyrics flowing out of me but um yeah that one was one of yeah probably the quicker songs that I've I've written and that was one of the only songs I wrote during lockdown I was gonna say is that fairly recent that's the minute I I think I wrote like three three songs during the some people were so productive I just felt like the life had been sucked out of me (laughs) you know (laughs) I think there's that there there was totally that pressure to be creative I think so I think everyone was like learn a language do this paint I can't paint like we're in a world pandemic calm down (laughs) yeah but some people really like took yeah they did well with it they learned new things they yeah. wrote a lot of songs like i just that i couldn't do it but that song came from lockdown which so is amazing i'm i'm happy about that so 10 things i hate about you is the you to corona is yeah <laughs> yes because yes. i can think of way more than 10 i'm not gonna lie <laughs> oh yeah no there's a long list much longer than 10 um no that one's not about corona i'm still working on <laughs> i'm still working good. on the corona one yeah okay. <laughs> to learn the hard way a reason for the dark days stones in my shoes have you heard the news and the whispers in the street when they're talking are they talking about me they say you live and you learn I've lived and I've heard everything you ever said all the monsters in my head I wish they'd go away Why won't they go away? All the words hit black and blue And all those monsters look like you And I wish they'd go away Why won't they? Why won't they go away? City reminds me you the way that you'd walk into the room, the shape of your eyes, the way that you lied, and your apology is weak, just like you. You run and you hide, yeah, you're weak, and that's true. You know, and I know, and you know she must know. But I don't know how a girl like me could love a boy like you. I'll ask myself that for ages And if I could, I would rip out those pages Everything you ever said All the monsters in my head I wish they'd go away Why won't they 
take away All the words hit black and blue And all those monsters look like you And I wish they go away Why won't they? Why won't they go away? I hate who you brought out me I hate that you put doubt in me I hate it that I let you I hate I can't forget you All those trucks with your last name on them My guitars and now you played all them The words you wrote in May The sick games you like to play When a yellow car passes by And it catches my eye Hate the hell you put me through Ten things I hate about The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. You've also done quite a lot of um, safe sounds, particularly in the US. Yes. Do you yeah. have a favourite one that you've done so far? Like, favourite city? Ooh. Because you've been all over the place. I have, yeah. I did quite a few so far sounds. Um, well, the first one that I did was in Chicago, so maybe that one holds, like, a oh, that's kind of special. Cool. But, yeah, yeah, and it was such a nice... Um, it was, like, a little bakery so I got a croissant and I mean come on that's a win right there right like you get to sing and you get a croissant like that's How my kind of day give her a croissant yeah exactly. yeah oh I'm like so not Night rock to and self. roll next time yeah. she comes around we need to give her a croissant yeah yeah people like you know at gigs they're obviously later everyone's offering you like a pint and I'm like no 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 but do you have any croissants back there because <laughs> I'll take one of those instead <laughs> 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 but no the Chicago so far was a really nice one and I'm hoping to do some in London because they have them all yeah, over yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm hoping to do some I had like a whole so far sounds sorry to be down here but I had a whole so far sounds tour in America oh. of May of 2020 oh, nice. and like I was hitting so many cool places and it just uh, yeah obviously it didn't work out but you know boohoo me we're all we're, we're all suffering in, in different ways so it happens and hopefully it will happen in the future so. exactly yeah do you find that um, whichever sister you talk to, like the audiences have a slightly different response? Yeah, probably. I think, um, yeah, geez, I never really thought about that. They probably do. So it would be interesting to do a London one because I'm, yeah. I'd be curious to see what. Like the I wonder, would like be from even them. in like Chicago versus New Jersey, for example. Yeah, I think it would be different. Some probably some groups are going to be like a little bit louder. Probably the Jersey groups are going to be like a little bit louder than um than the Chicago uh, yeah. ones. But yeah, I'm gonna have to revisit this in my mind and get back to you, okay? Yeah, because cool. I yeah, didn't really right. think about that. But yeah, definitely places are are going to be different. Um, I did one in Boston that was quite fun. It was in a um, it was in a what's it called? Is it just called hot yoga? Is that what it's called? Where like have, is this a How thing is in England? Maybe this is not. Wait, you oh, did it is boiling. <laughs> what, what? You did a gig in hot yoga? It was. What? It was boiling hot. Though I mean, they had all the windows open, um, and it was a pretty large studio, like so yoga hang on, studio. Everyone's doing yoga, and you're playing live. No, we weren't actually okay. doing yoga, but we all <laughs> were sweating. It was very, very hot up there. Um, no, we didn't do the yoga, but that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, they should. That should be their I was next. Like, your songs are chill, step. but are they that? Chill? Yeah, no, it wouldn't be that. No, wouldn't be that. No, just in the studio. Okay. But that was a cool one, yeah. Boston is a nice uh that's a cool city yeah so far sounds is a great um they're just yeah, great they're cool. shows because yeah, yeah. they're such music lovers going to those gigs so you have like their undivided attention yeah. and it's it's really nice you get to chat it's so like intimate you feel like it's yeah it it's just a nice it's a really nice show for artists to do because of you know it's hard sometimes yeah, when you're like gigging around London. It's hard to keep people's 100%. attention. So those are really nice gigs. That leads me really nicely to live gigs that you've done in London so far. Yes. Do you have a favorite haunt? Ooh. Uh, I don't know if I have a favorite. Honestly, they're all just like they can all be different. Yet different crowds. Like yeah, I've liked everywhere that I've I've performed. Even and you know now I'll I'll do the paid gigs but even when I started coming to London I was doing like open mic nights and stuff like those are so fun you meet yeah. cool people like you get to that was such an exciting time for me like when I first started visiting London before I moved here um 
doing those open mic nights and, you know, and it, they could be in some dodgy places, but it's still so fun. You're meeting cool people and yeah. it's just, yeah, music lovers. So, no, I've liked everywhere I've performed, honestly. Yeah. There's not one that sticks out to me that, that was like, oh, that's the one or like, oh, no, don't go to that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> they were all good. <laughs> so go back to the croissant. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Which you say you- much nicer than me. How you, do you say, say that? It? I say croissant. Mine is How just do I say it? no croissant. Fi- yeah, you have a little finesse. Do I, I don't, I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> I don't have finesse. No like, one's ever told me I've had finesse before. In oh, my life. you do. Oh, yeah, you say it, you say it very nicely. Yes. Interesting. Um, so, if you um, kids play a um, a dream venue, which we'll get to in a minute, mm-hmm. um, and you could have a dream rider at this dream venue, apart oh. from croissants. Yes. What yes. would be on that rider? Ooh. Wow. Okay, I would say iced coffees with caramel, caramel, which yeah. I have to say now because <laughs> caramel again is very New Jersey, and when I really? say it here, yeah, See, which I, I mean, think that it is person. wrong. Caramel is not right. I'd be right? like, who's caramel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> ca- caramel, um, iced coffee with caramel. I, I would want those back there. God, I'm I'm really How would that be before or after the gig. I think it would be before. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't there wouldn't be like a lot of food on my on my rider because I've apart from croissants. <laughs> apart from croissants, yeah, which would be fine, but like I've I've eaten before a gig before and yeah. like, you know, regretted it. You know, okay. like Unstitched. you feel you do not feel good up there. Okay. Now I what I ate was scallops, so I probably picked the worst thing oh, to wow. eat before yeah. I kicked. I'm really bold. Um what else would I put on there? Croissants, iced coffee? Yeah, I, I'm pretty low maintenance. I wouldn't be asking for like Skittles, only red ones. You know, it would be none of that. Like I, I wouldn't be. I'm, I'm not fancy. Like just a croissant and iced coffee. I Good used to, to go. ride a girl, so like I totally feel the pain. Oh, okay. Like, I've Have been you that seen girl the craziest that goes things? After, like, Weird honey and stuff. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not, not me. <laughs> I would. I if I wanted honey, which I wouldn't. I, it would be the most basic. But cool. the cheapest one you could get, which is yeah. what I buy when I go to the grocery <laughs> store. So, no, I, my rider would be quite quite easy. So let's take this rider, and you can play at any dream venue across the world. Where would it be? Maybe this is just because I'm from New Jersey and I'm so close to New York, but I think Madison Square Garden is Ooh, just like... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there are venues, you know, obviously here in, in England that I would love to play at, but... I think for me, yeah, Madison Square Garden. If I could, okay. if I could play there, I've never even been to a show there, so I should really probably do that first, yeah, and then um, go to a show there and then play a show there. Yes, cool. yeah, but it's such an iconic, yeah. right, Madison Square. Like that's in like New York. It's such a great city. And so. then if you could collaborate with anyone at Madison Square Gardens, they could Ooh. be dead or alive. Okay, and you'd have to share this rider with them as well. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> they would they would get croissants and iced coffees, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's probably would be a little dream. bit more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who would I pick? Oh my gosh! Sorry, big question. Yeah, that's tough. There's so many people that I, so many like artists that I love, but I'm trying to think of one that I would want to. Maybe it would be Cheryl Crow. I think yeah. Cheryl Crow and I would get along really well too. Cool. You know, I feel like okay. we'd be friends, yeah. and that is a nice thing. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it would be. Cool. So yeah. Cheryl Crow in Madison Square Gardens, yep. and uh, you guys would be drinking iced coffee and eating croissants. We would be. There cool. you go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some pizza if we're in New York. Yeah. Maybe pizza would be on the rider. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Great pizza all over. Is the pizza city. like only a New York thing? Um. I think if you're from New York, New Jersey, like n- certain parts of the Northeast, then yeah, like we do pizza really well. Okay. And I think when you go outside of those places, if you're from that place, yeah. you're horrified at what you pizza like is like in other parts of the country. Yeah. Okay. Unsuit. But we are like spoiled for choice when it comes to pizza. Okay. Where I am in New Jersey, which is central, um, I mean, from my house, like it just a mile away, like there's... 50 pizza you know what I mean I'm like no joke they are scattered everywhere where we are and they're all great like we do we do pizza really well so yeah we would have a nice there would be a nice large pie I don't really call it pie though <laughs> would you guys ever say that would you call well, pizza, pizza a pie no. yeah pizza's pizza. okay I don't know who does that maybe it is New Yorkers but yeah where I am we we just call it pizza but, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A pie. What? I know. Yeah, a they're expecting like something else. A pastry pie, apple pie, steak. peach pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steak and ale. 
Right. <laughs> That's an English thing, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you finally, uh, your final track that you played for us, uh, which was called Your Mother. Um, I wanted to ask about um, the writing process for that. Yes, okay, Your Mother. That is one of my oldest songs. So I released Apartment 101. Um, Your Mother is on the EP, Apartment yeah. 101. And that was one of the first songs that I had written. I was doing, like, really pop stuff when I had moved to Los Angeles. Um, and then I just started kind of working on uh, getting better at guitar. And then Your Mother was one of the first songs that I had written once I was sort of getting the hang of guitar. Um, again, these songs, like, they... I was always someone that had to try so hard to write. And once thing- these things started happening to me, these songs were flowing so easily. Deep, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, though, my um, my ex-boyfriend from uh, back home, who whose mother is absolutely lovely, and the song is not about her, but, like, oh. we're still in touch, and I think she thinks it's about okay. her. So I hope she's going to listen to this and realize, like, for sure it is not about her. Um, so that was a little bit tough to yeah. hear. She was like, oh. I was like, no, no, it's not about you. You're safe. Aww. You're safe. I know. It's sad. Um, but, yeah, that one really came together. These songs are... Sorry, I hate to say, like, oh, these were easy to write. But I think when you have, like, a lot of feelings and things happen to you, it it is. They just, like, they are my creative, like, outlet, you know? Um, So they're just coming out. Do you find that mentally after you've written a song, it's almost like a release? Yeah, and then I sing it like a billion times and I just jam on guitar and I'm like angry in my apartment or flat. And <laughs> yes, that helps. Yeah, my neighbors probably hate me. She's in a pub 101 going right. for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it does. It definitely lets you uh, let go of a little bit of a little bit of anger, <laughs> bitterness. There's still a little bit <laughs> left in me. but <laughs> Maybe I but should try some racing. No, no jokes. Yeah. I won't do that. That would be awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's next for Erin what is next so I have been working on I've been working on this album for so long now COVID sort of put it on hold um, and I will circle back but um, I'm still writing lots now and just um, gigging eventually which was the plan when I moved to London um, I want to put together like a full band because cool. I love doing acoustic shows I love just playing guitar on my own but there's something so nice about a full band yeah. it, it like and these songs, the way that they're produced, like, they deserve to have the, the whole band. So you really get the full idea of what how they could you, be. How do you envisage, like, the sound to be? Ooh. Well, it is such, like, the album that I'm working on now is a bit um, where, like, Apartment 101 was a little more somber. And this has a bit angrier vibes. Okay, so cool. it will be quite, like... Rocky kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. It will be pretty bold, I think, once a once a band is there. So, like, drums, bass, guitar. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, okay. I think so. I, I think we could really... Yeah, I'm going to work on putting it together. I, I think it would they w- it would really do the songs justice. Cool. Yeah, which would be nice. Yay. Yeah. All right, cool. And if people want to come and um, find you online, they want to... Um, follow you mm-hmm. where can mm-hmm. they go what can they do um well mostly all my handles are at aaron bowman music cool. uh and instagram is where i post the most sweet. um and if you want to yeah check out apartment 101 and the new stuff that uh sweet like summer that just came out and then new stuff that i'll release um just spotify apple music all that aaron bowman cool easy my real i'm name. expecting um a new album called number nine yeah. <laughs> it's on its way. Yeah. <laughs> it's a common. <laughs> if it's not called number nine, I'll be having one. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds well, good. Thank you so much for coming down to the studio and having a chat with us. Me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Ooh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Your back east blaming issues on your mother It's hard to feel free For me it's hard to believe We were nothing, could have sworn that we were something I pretend I don't really care You know I'm bluffing cause honestly It's taking some time to feel Oh yeah, you reach out, small talk Tell me I'm pretty, ask me how I'm doing He asked the new city and Either you don't care, or maybe you're just unaware that you hurt me real good. You did 
some damage, but that's just you, dark clouds. Yeah, yeah, you're tragic. Maybe we should ever sit down. I think it's time you figure your stuff out. Cause I've been in over my head and out of my mind. Hoping for a little bit of sleep to get me by. Yeah. Protecting what's mine Messed up on emotions I can't seem to get right Messed up from feelings I can't seem to fight Now I wake up to the sound of a new song Ringing in my ears, of course It's a blue song When things go bad Yeah, when did it get like that? Back on your words and all your promise I need a new drug, I'm getting off You call up the pharmacist My friends try to talk me down Oh, they try and help me figure it out Cause I've been in over my head And out of my mind Hoping for a little bit of sleep To get me by Yeah, I've been in over my head Protecting what's mine up on emotions I can't seem to get right Messed up from feelings I can't seem to fight Now I'm not sure why or how I adore ya Maybe it's lonely in California And somehow you made me feel home But that beach day haunts me Oh yeah, it cost me there's a price just to want you to want me Tell me how much do I owe When one plus one is two But not for you cause You solve problems how you want And man it's useless To try and teach you the way We're never gonna be okay Cause with you I'm swimming upstream Against the current so you're pulling me in Oh man I wish you weren't thousand miles away so somehow messing up my day yeah I've been in over my head and out of my mind hoping for a little bit of sleep to get me by yeah I've been in over my head protecting my pride messed up on emotions I can't seem to get right Messed up from feelings I can't seem to fight